Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on the Bernoulli principle and the Venturi effect. The Bernoulli principle states that increased flow velocity of an ideal fluid will be accompanied by a simultaneous drop in its pressure. It assumes that flow is steady and streamlined, and the fluid is incompressible and is frictionless. The Bernoulli principle can be written as pressure of the fluid plus half times density of the fluid times velocity of the fluid to the power of 2 equals a constant. Increase in velocity of the fluid must be accompanied by a drop in pressure in order for the sum to always add up to the same constant number. If the speed of a fluid V is larger in a given region of a streamline flow, the pressure must be smaller in that region. The Bernoulli principle is contained within the Bernoulli's equation, which is included here for completion's sake. The law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but can only change from one form to another. The Bernoulli principle and the Venturi effect are based on the law of conservation of energy. The total energy contained within a fluid system must always be constant. The total energy during a fluid flow consists of the sum of kinetic and potential energy. Kinetic energy is related to the velocity of the flow and potential energy is related to the pressure. Increased kinetic energy or velocity of the fluid results in reduced potential energy or pressure by an equal amount. This ensures that the total energy content within a fluid system remains the same. This assumes that there is no energy loss due to friction and no energy is added or removed from the system. Reduction in pressure can be used to entrain gases or liquids. This allows applications such as nebulizers and venturi mass. The venturi effect refers to the effect by which the introduction of a constriction to fluid flow within a tube causes increased flow velocity and reduction in the pressure of the fluid. This is an extension of the Bernoulli principle. A given number of fluid particles have to move faster through the narrow section of the tube in order to keep the total flow the same. Flow velocity varies inversely with the cross-sectional area of the tube. A fixed volume of fluid will pass any given point in a uniform tube per unit time when fluid flows through the tube under a constant driving pressure. If a constriction is applied in the same tube, increased flow velocity occurs because the same volume must pass through the narrower segment of the tube per unit time as that passing through the wider section. The Venturi effect does not describe the entrainment of air or any other fluid. This is a practical application of the Venturi effect rather than the effect itself. Reduced pressure caused by the Venturi effect can be used to entrain fluids or gases into the system in a predictable manner. If after the constriction of the tube, there is an increase in the diameter of the tube, there is a reduction in flow velocity and increase in pressure, an opening at the constriction within the tube results in entrainment of fluid into the flow stream because the pressure at the constriction is less than the atmospheric pressure, entraining fluid via a side port allows the flow velocity to be maintained at a higher rate in the exit cone. The Venturi effect can be used to mix gases or fluids to produce a fixed concentration by manipulating driving flow, constriction size, and the size of the tube opening and entrainment apertures. Venturi masks. Venturi masks are fixed performance devices that utilize the Venturi effect to deliver a precise concentration of oxygen to the patient. Sometimes they are called high airflow oxygen enrichment masks or HEFO masks. Unlike variable performance devices, fixed performance devices allows interpretation of oxygen saturations and blood gases in the context of known FiO2. Another example of fixed performance devices includes anesthetic breathing systems, where the reservoir back acts to deliver a fresh gas flow that exceeds the patient's peak inspiratory flow rate. Venturi masks are used to deliver oxygen to patients when a specific and constant oxygen concentration is needed, such as in patients whose ventilation is dependent on their hypoxic drive, such as in those with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Components The plastic body of the mask with holes on both sides. The proximal end of the mask consists of a Venturi device. The Venturi device is color-coded and marked 
with the recommended oxygen flow rate to provide the desired oxygen concentration. It has a proximal nozzle that connects to the mask and a distal connection to connect to a standard oxygen tubing. A calibrated variable Venturi device exists which can be used to deliver the desired FiO2. Venturi face masks have both adult and pediatric versions. Venturi devices can be attached to a reservoir tubing and this can be attached to a tracheal tube, a tracheostomy mask or a supraglottic airway device as part of a T-piece breathing system. Mechanism of Action The Venturi mask uses the Bernoulli principle and Venturi effect to deliver a predetermined and fixed FiO2 to the patient. The Bernoulli principle states that increased flow velocity of an ideal fluid will be accompanied by a simultaneous drop in its pressure. The Venturi effect is the effect by which the introduction of a constriction to fluid flow within a tube causes increased flow velocity and reduction of pressure of the fluid. This reduction in the fluid pressure caused by the Venturi effect is used to entrain fluids or gases into the system in a predictable manner. As the flow of oxygen passes through the constriction, a negative pressure is created. Ambient air is entrained via entrainment apertures and mixed with the oxygen flow. The Bernoulli principle and Venturi effect has been described in detail in the previous section. FiO2 is dependent on the degree of air entrainment Less entrainment ensures a higher FiO2 is delivered and vice versa. The degree of air entrainment from the Venturi effect is determined by manipulating driving flow, constriction size, and the size of the entrainment apertures. Venturi devices must be driven by the correct oxygen flow rate calibrated for the aperture size to achieve a predictable FiO2. Regarding constriction size, reduction in constriction size results in increased negative pressure generated and increased ambient air entrain and reduction in FiO2 and vice versa. A reduction in entrainment aperture size results in reduced entrain ambient air and increased FiO2 and vice versa. For example, a Venturi mask delivering 60% oxygen will have smaller apertures than a 24% FiO2 mask as the latter has to dilute the oxygen with more air to achieve the FiO2. The entrainment ratio refers to the ratio between the entrained fluid flow and the driving fluid flow. In Venturi mask, increased entrainment ratio results in reduced FiO2 and vice versa. The entrainment ratio for FiO2 24% is 25.3 to 1. Entrainment ratio of 28% FiO2 is 10.3 to 1. Entrainment ratio of FiO2 35% is 4.6 to 1. Entrainment ratio of FiO2 50% is 1.7 to 1, and entrainment ratio of FiO2 60% is 1 to 1. For example, a FiO2 24% Venturi mask has an air to oxygen entrainment ratio of 25 to 1. Oxygen flow of 2 liters per minute delivers a total flow of 50 liters per minute, which is well above the peak inspiratory flow rate. Reduced entrainment ratio results in increased FiO2, but reduced total flow of gas to the patient. Therefore, HEFO devices are not suitable for the administration of FiO2 more than 60% as gas flow may be inadequate. Mask side holes of Venturi mask are used to vent the exhaled gases only, unlike the side holes in variable performance mask, which are used to entrain inspired air in addition to expel exhaled gases. Increased fresh gas flow rate causes the exhaled gases to be rapidly flushed from the mask by its holes resulting in no rebreathing and no increased dead space. Advantages of the Venturi mask include simple design, it is lightweight, it is able to deliver a specific and consistent concentration of oxygen to the patient under most circumstances. The set oxygen flow must be above the minimum recommended level by the manufacturer. Respiratory rate and pattern do not generally change the inspired concentration of oxygen. Disadvantages The patient may find the Venturi mask noisy and bulky and this may reduce patient compliance. There is risk of hypoxia by under-delivering oxygen. A Venturi mask is designed to provide accurate FiO2 to the patient if the oxygen flow is set above the recommended minimum rate which is printed on the side of the device and when total flow 
exceeds the patient's peak inspiratory flow rate. Total flow delivered to the patient is the sum of the set oxygen flow through the Venturi device and the volume of air entrained through its apertures. For the delivered oxygen concentration to remain accurate, total flow must exceed the patient's peak inspiratory flow rate. The Venturi device stops behaving like a fixed performance oxygen delivery device and may behave like a variable performance device if the patient's peak inspiratory flow rate exceeds the flow rate reaching the patient from the Venturi mask. Additionally, required inspiratory flow is obtained by entraining air around the mask. This results in dilution of the oxygen concentration delivered to the patient and reduction in FiO2. If the respiratory rate of the patient exceeds 30 breaths per minute, increase oxygen flow through the Venturi to more than the minimum rate printed on the device to avoid having total flow being less than the patient's peak inspiratory flow rate. Oxygen flows above the minimum do not change the FiO2 produced by the device as the oxygen flow and the amount of air and train are proportional. Other disadvantages include reduced accuracy at high FiO2, average FiO2 delivered in Venturi masks may be up to 5% above the expected value and this may reduce ventilation in patients dependent on their hypoxic drive. Increased oxygen flow can lead to drying of the airways. Humidifiers used with a Venturi mask create water droplets which may occlude the narrow oxygen inlet and this alters the device entrainment ratio and FiO2. Nasal cannulae These are variable performance devices. A flow rate of 2 to 4 liters per minute delivers an FiO2 of 0.28 to 0.36 respectively. Uses includes as an alternative to an oxygen mask in those requiring low levels of supplemental oxygen. These are ideal for patients on long-term oxygen therapy. Versions includes a two-pronged version and a single nostril nasal catheter version. The two-pronged version is held in place by an adjustable head strap. The tubing is looped around the patient's ears. Two prongs are inserted around 1 cm into the nose. The single nostril nasal catheter is a single lumen catheter and is inserted into a single nostril. It has a sponge tip which holds it in place and may be secured with additional tape to the patient's face. It is well tolerated and may be used in situations where traditional nasal cannulae would interfere with the surgical field, such as during carotid surgery. Mechanism of action. Ambient air is entrained along with the oxygen flow from the nasal cannulae through the nostrils, the nasal pharynx acts as an oxygen reservoir. The FiO2 achieved is proportional to the oxygen flow rate, volume of the nasal pharynx, the patient's tidal volume, inspiratory flow, and respiratory rate. Mouth breathing causes inspiratory airflow. This produces a venturi effect in the posterior pharynx, and this results in entrainment of oxygen from the nasal pharynx. Studies have shown that mouth breathing results in either same or higher FiO2. However, this effect is unpredictable and thus nasal cannulae deliver a variable FiO2. Advantages of nasal cannulae includes it is cheap, simple and effective and well tolerated. The patient is able to speak, eat and drink. There is higher compliance with nasal cannulae compared to facial oxygen masks. Disadvantages include variable FiO2 delivered the cannulae and dry gas flow may cause trauma and irritation to the nasal mucosa. Increased flow rate causes discomfort, potentially causing epistaxis and impaired mucociliary clearance. The nasal cannulae is inappropriate for patients with blocked nasal passages. Nebulizers Nebulizers are used for humidification by producing a mist of water micro droplets suspended in a gaseous medium. The quantity of micro droplets are not limited by gas temperature. If the size of micro droplets are 2 to 5 micrometers, they are deposited in the tracheal bronchial tree. If the size are 0.5 to 1 micrometer, micro droplets are deposited in the alveoli. The smaller the droplets, the more stable they are. Nebulizers are also used to deliver medications to peripheral airways and to deliver radioactive isotopes in diagnostic lung ventilation imaging. Types includes the gas-driven nebulizer, 
spinning disc nebulizer, and ultrasonic nebulizer. The gas-driven nebulizer is compact, making it easy to place close to the patient. High pressure gas flows through the venturi. This creates negative pressure and fluid is drawn up through the capillary tube and broken into a fine spray. The bottom end of the capillary tube is immersed in a fluid container. The top end of the capillary tube is close to the venturi constriction. Even smaller droplets can be achieved as the spray hits the anvil or baffle. Majority of the droplets are in the range of 2 to 4 micrometers. These droplets tend to deposit on the pharynx and upper airway. A small amount of droplets reaches the bronchial level. Larger droplets of up to 20 micrometer in size are also produced. Droplets with diameters of more than 5 micrometers fall back into the container. Droplets of less than 4 micrometer in size float out with the fresh gas flow. Spinning disc nebulizer. Water impinges onto the disc after being drawn from a reservoir via a tube over which the disc is mounted. The motor-driven spinning disc throws out micro droplets of water by centrifugal force. Ultrasonic nebulizer is highly efficient in delivering humidification and drugs to the airway. A piezoelectric transducer head vibrates at ultrasonic frequency. The transducer can be immersed in the fluid or the fluid can be dropped onto it. Droplets of less than 1 to 2 microns in size are produced. Droplets of less than 1 micrometer are deposited in alveoli and lower airways. This advantage includes there is a risk of overhydration. Jet ventilation Introduction Jet ventilation permits positive pressure ventilation in the absence of a sealed airway. Examples of devices that provide jet ventilation includes the Sanders injector and high-frequency jet ventilator. They use a high-pressure oxygen source. High-pressure source is required to overcome the increased resistance presented by the narrow lumen to achieve adequate ventilation and to provide sufficient flow for lung expansion despite the lack of an airway seal. A patent airway is required for expiration around the device. Passive expiration cannot take place through the narrow jet lumen due to increased resistance. Barotrauma is a significant complication with all techniques of jet ventilation. Care must be taken to allow full expiration between jets. Lung disease which increases the risk of barotrauma is a relative contraindication. Jet ventilation cannot deliver an anesthetic gas mixture and anesthesia if required is usually maintained intravenously. Jet ventilation does not equate to high-frequency oscillatory ventilation, which is a technique used in neonatal and adult intensive care. Uses of jet ventilation for anesthesia for airway surgery and in emergency ventilation. Classification of jet ventilation includes manual or automated, low-frequency or high-frequency, and the devices can be classified as supraglottic or infraglottic. Supraglottic ventilation is carried out using a jetting needle attached to the surgical laryngoscope. Examples of infraglottic jet ventilation devices include the Hanseker jet ventilation catheter, which is used for transglottic ventilation. This specialized catheter is placed at laryngoscopy. A Ravusin cricothyroidotomy needle and cannula for percutaneous infraglottic ventilation. This is placed under local or general anesthesia and jet ventilation via a rigid bronchoscope using a manual jet or Sanders injector. Low frequency jet ventilation. Uses of low frequency jet ventilation as a means of ventilating patients when the airway is shared between the anesthetist and the surgeon in conjunction with rigid bronchoscopes or laryngoscopes during short duration airway surgery. They are also used during rescue ventilation through a narrow bore airway device such as a cricothyroidotomy cannula in emergency airway management such as can't intubate, can't ventilate scenario. Low frequency jet ventilation is also used prior to the initiation of high frequency jet ventilation. Low frequency jet ventilation is delivered using a manually controlled venturi ventilation device which are handheld, pneumatically powered 
manually cycled flow generators such as the Manujet injector and Sanders injector. Components include a high pressure oxygen source at about 4 bar which is from the anesthetic machine or direct from a pipeline, an on-off trigger, connection tubing which is able to withstand high pressures, and a needle or cannula of suitable gauge which allows good air entrainment without creating excessive airway pressures. Mechanism of action Oxygenation High pressure oxygen source is connected to the jet ventilator by either a shrader valve or mini shrader valve and provides a driving pressure of 4 bar or 400 kPa. Injection of high pressure oxygen and entrainment of surrounding air occurs. High pressure oxygen is injected intermittently through the needle or cannula. For the Sanders injector, manual perch trigger is used to deliver oxygen at 4 bar through the tubing to a connector, often a lower lock. The connector attaches the ventilator to either a cricothyroid needle or cannula, surgical laryngoscope, bronchoscope or other airway device. For a manual jet, it uses a similar mechanism akin to the Sanders injector and it has a pressure regulating valve that permits the pressure delivered to be reduced to 50 to 350 kPa. Injection of high pressure oxygen creates a venturi effect and training atmospheric air and inflating the lungs with oxygen-enriched air. Apart from the Venturi effect, frictional drag on air molecules by the passing oxygen also contributes to entrainment of surrounding air. The delivered tidal volume is the sum of injected and entrained volumes of gases. FiO2 is affected by the ratio of injected oxygen to entrained air and is difficult to predict. FiO2 is usually between 0.75 and 0.9. Ventilation Regarding the tidal volume, inspiratory and expiratory volumes are not monitored during manual jet ventilation. Tidal volume is assessed by observing chest movements to ensure adequate ventilation and to avoid hyperinflation. Respiratory rate Jet frequency of between 8 to 20 per minute is typically appropriate and this allows time for both chest wall expansion and passive recoil and effective removal of CO2. Assessment of ventilation is via observation of chest wall for expansion and via performance of arterial blood gas analysis. And tidal CO2 is difficult to measure accurately via capnography as low-frequency jet ventilation constitutes a semi-open system. Prevention of lung injury the peak airway pressure is usually 25 cmH2O for a typical diameter cannulae. This is because the majority of the pressure from the high pressure oxygen source is used to overcome the resistance of the narrow ball cannula and the high pressure delivered by the jet ventilator does not reach the patient. Exhalation is a passive process. The upper airway must be patent to allow adequate exhalation of gases. The chest must be seen to fully exhale before the next breath is delivered to prevent breath stacking, air trapping, barrel trauma and volume trauma. Humidification and warming of inspired gases is not possible with low frequency jet ventilation. Thus, low frequency jet ventilation should be used for short periods. Maintenance of anesthesia As low frequency jet ventilation cannot deliver inhalational anesthetic agents, anesthesia if required should be maintained intravenously. Advantages of low-frequency jet ventilation includes simplicity, it is quick to set up and use, and it is effective for rescue ventilation. These advantages include inavailability of airway pressure monitoring, gastric distension can occur if ventilation commences before the distal end of the bronchoscope is beyond the larynx, movement of the vocal cords can be caused by low-frequency jet ventilation, which does not occur during high-frequency jet ventilation, the movement of vocal cords can pose difficulties during airway surgery. LFJV can only be used for short periods of time. LFJV cannot humidify or warm inspired gases. Tidal volumes and FiO2 are variable and impossible to measure. There is risk of barrel trauma and volume trauma. Volatile anesthetics cannot be delivered. There is inability to monitor anti-tidal CO2 accurately. Next, we move on to high-frequency jet ventilation. 
It is used as a means of ventilating patients when minimal vocal cord movement or motionless surgical field is required, for example, during ENT surgery, during radiofrequency ablation of hepatic lesions, and during lithotripsy. Low-frequency jet ventilation causes significant movement of the vocal cords, potentially making surgery difficult. High-frequency jet ventilation generates low tidal volumes at high frequency, allowing ventilation with minimal vocal cord movement, and this creates a motionless surgical field. HFJV is also used during one lung ventilation to improve oxygenation when basic maneuvers have failed. In neonates, high-frequency jet ventilation is used to ventilate neonates with severe pulmonary disease that is complicated by air leaks, such as pulmonary interstitial emphysema, pulmonary hypoplasia, restrictive lung disease, and persistent pulmonary hypertension. Components High-frequency jet ventilator, for example, Mistral Jet Ventilator by Acutronic, which has dials and displays, for example, for driving pressure, frequency, and inspiratory time, solenoid valves, which are used to deliver the jet gas, high-flow air oxygen or nitrous oxide oxygen blender, which determines the mix of jet gas, peristaltic pump for nebulizing drugs or distilled water to humidify the jet gas. The Venturi injector device can be a cannula positioned in a tracheal tube, a modified tracheal tube with two additional small lumens opening distally, one for delivering humidified jet driving gas and one for airway pressure monitoring, or a cannula positioned in the trachea via the cricothyroid membrane. Mechanism of action. High frequency jet ventilators are pneumatically powered, electronically controlled, time cycled flow generators. They use high pressure pipeline gas at 4 bar to deliver inspiratory gases in small jet pulsations. Flow is controlled by a series of solenoid electromagnetic valves that open and close at a high frequency. Connection of the high frequency jet ventilator to the airway device is via a strong flexible tubing with a lower lock adapter. Oxygenation. Fresh gases leaving the narrow injector at high velocity causes entrainment of air via the Venturi effect and frictional drag of air. The amount of entrained gas is uncertain and this makes measurement of delivered tidal volume and FiO2 difficult. Ventilation. The volume of gas delivered to the patient depends on set frequency, inspiratory time and driving pressure. Jet gases and entrained gases impact into the large volume of relatively immobile gases in the airway and this causes them to move forward. Minute volume achieved is 5 to 60 liters per minute. Expiration is a passive process. Available settings depends on the model. Examples include the driving pressure, frequency, inspiratory time, FiO2, pulse pressure, PEEP, and alarm limits. The driving pressure is also known as the inspiratory pressure, ranges from 40 to 350 kPa. Typical starting driving pressure for an adult is 150 kPa or 1.5 bar. High pressure is delivered through a narrow constriction and this reduces the pressure to a safe level before it reaches the airway. Frequency is 12 to 600 cycles per minute. A typical starting frequency is 100 cycles per minute. In high frequency jet ventilation, high frequency results in higher PaCO2, which is the opposite of conventional positive pressure ventilation. Inspiratory time is adjustable from 20 to 50 percent of the cycle. FiO2 is adjusted between 0.21 to 1.0 via an oxygen air blender. The final FiO2 delivered to the alveoli is difficult to predict due to mixing of oxygen with entrained air. The pulse pressure is the airway pressure at the end of a cycle and approximates to the mean airway pressure. Ideally, this should be less than 20 cmH2O to prevent barotrauma. PEEP occurs automatically at respiratory rate of more than 100 per minute. Additional PEEP can be added by using a PEEP valve. Alarm limits can be set. Gas exchange in high-frequency jet ventilation. Proposed mechanisms include convective streaming, simple diffusion, pendeluft, resonance, and cardiogenic oscillations. In convective streaming, high-velocity inspiratory jet travels down the center of the airway, whilst gas is simultaneously exhaled around the edge of the stream. 
In Pendeloft, high-frequency jet stream inflates highly compliant alveoli first. Inflated lung units then empty into alveoli, which are less compliant. Pendeloft augments ventilation even after the end of the inspiratory phase. In resonance, the amplitude with which the air moves in and out of distal segments of the lung increases significantly when the frequency of the delivered breaths is close to the natural frequency of the lung. In cardiogenic oscillations, the heart exerts a vibrational force on the lungs when it beats, and this may augment gas exchange. Comparison of high-frequency positive pressure ventilation with high-frequency jet ventilation and high-frequency oscillatory ventilation. In high-frequency positive pressure ventilation, frequency is 1 to 2.5 Hz and cycles per minute is 60 to 150. In high-frequency jet ventilation, frequency is 4 to 11 Hz and cycles per minute is 240 to 660. In high-frequency oscillatory ventilation, frequency is 8 to 30 Hz and cycles per minute is 480 to 1800 cycles per minute. Advantages of high-frequency jet ventilation There is reduced adverse effects of positive pressure ventilation when compared to conventional IPPV, such as lower peak airway pressures, lower mean airway pressures, less alveolar distension, less hemodynamic instability, better maintenance of the cardiac output, reduced antidiuretic hormone production and reduced fluid retention, and is better tolerated by alert patients. High-frequency jet ventilation creates an almost motionless surgical field. High-frequency jet ventilation may assist in clearing of airway secretions due to airway vibration caused by the high-frequency ventilation. HFJV is automated and this frees up the anesthetist. High-pressure and system malfunction alarms are present. High-frequency jet ventilators has a pressure-limiting function. High-frequency jet ventilators can humidify inspired gases. Disadvantages There may be difficulty in assessing the patient. For example, auscultation of breath sounds and heart sounds is difficult due to the constant vibration and noise produced by the ventilator. Barrel trauma may occur. There is risk of gas trapping and volume trauma. Exhalation is dependent on passive lung and chest wall recoil to drive the gas out through the tracheal tube. Obstruction of the airway with secretions can occur. High-frequency jet ventilation is unable to deliver volatile anesthetic agents, and TIVA is required for anesthesia. There is difficulty in measuring antidal CO2 and final FiO2. Hypotension can occur. Necrotizing tracheal bronchitis in neonates can occur. These are my references. Thank you.